Welcome to a very special night, to a, a very special evening tonight. This is our concert. We want to welcome you, all of you here today. But we want to reassure you that we don't want to just have you entertained, but we want you to be blessed. And we wanted you to be blessed by worshiping with us. Tonight, don't let it just be for you to, to be entertained, but let's give glory to our great King in song and praise. So why don't we stand all over this house and let's lift up our voice. Why don't we dedicate this, this time of worship and praise unto the Lord our God. Let's lift up our voices together as we welcome those also on our live stream. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you. We honor you as our great king. You are the only blessed potentate, king of kings and lord of lords. And tonight, Lord God, we've come to gather as a people with one voice and one heart, with our desire to exalt you and lift you up, Lord God, tonight. Father, let your spirit be in this house. Let your anointing flow. Let your power be released in this place. And let us see your glory, Lord God, descend upon your people. I pray that even through every song, Lord God, let the Spirit of God begin to minister to everyone that's here. Begin to bring healing and strength and deliverance and salvation as we open our hearts to you this night. Lord, anoint your singers and musicians. Anoint your servant tonight. Use them as vessels to usher us into the presence of the Lord. And we will not fail to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, would you clap your hands one more time? And let's exalt him. Hallelujah. Tonight, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our song leader, our worship leader, our special guest, all the way from Ohio, the United States, Reverend Mark Crowder. Please come.
Somebody lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Promises. We're standing on his promises. In him we have a confidence. He won't fail.
before by the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift up your hand and testify. If you've received the gift of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I want you to lift up your hands and testify tonight. If you've had your life turned around by the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift up your hand and testify tonight. If your marriage has been put back together and you're thankful that you wouldn't be here with your spouse tonight if it wasn't for God, Lift up your hand and testify tonight. If the Holy Ghost touched your children and your children are here in the house or they're at home safe because of the power of the Holy Ghost, lift up your hand and testify tonight. Folks, we have a reason to thank God. That's why I, I can't just sit here and, and go through the motions and be all cute. I know it's supposed to be a concert. And I know we're supposed to sound good and I want to sound good and I want to have a good time. But I am so overwhelmed by his goodness in my life. I'm so overwhelmed by his power and his blessing. And it's because of that I can shout, I thank God. It's because of that I can shout that he is worthy and that he is a good God and he is faithful. I want you to know you don't have to stay in your seat tonight. If you're feeling drawn to the front and you're like, I'm not sure if that's for me. I don't go to this church. I want you to know you can find your way all the way down here to the front. And I want you to know that Jesus will meet you. We're living in a world full of chaos. How many are frightened by the world that we live in somewhat sometimes? There's sometimes I go to sleep at night and I'm thankful for the God that we serve and I have confidence in him, but I don't have as much confidence in me. I don't have as much confidence in our leaders. I don't have as much confidence in the neighbor that lives next to me sometimes, but I have a lot of confidence in him. And this next song says that he's my mighty fortress. The Bible says that his name is a strong tower and the righteous can run into it. And what does it say? They are safe. So I know you may be struggling with this world that we're living in, but I want you to know you're in the right place tonight. If you're looking for safety, you're in the right place. If you're looking for a miracle, you're in the right place. If you're looking for a savior, you are in the right place. You can lift up your hands. You can open up your heart to him right now. Why don't you just do that all over this place? 
If you feel the Holy Ghost calling you, if you feel Jesus pulling on you, feel free to come down to this altar. God's about to do something so powerful in this place tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus.
There's no other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. When 
and sing with me. It's an old song that goes like this. Jesus, 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 there's just something <laughs> about that name. Says this, he's my
Praise God. Praise God. How many are thankful for that name of Jesus? I'm so thankful for that name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The choir is coming and we're going to sing uh, another song from my album called Faith Over Fear. How many are thankful for the voice of faith tonight? Amen. I know that the enemy would like to interject fear in our lives and would like to make us step back and to be quiet and to shut down. But there's a voice of Christ tonight. There's a voice of faith that if we'll tap into that, God's already given us the victory. Somebody shout victory. Oh, you can do better than that. Somebody shout victory. Now, I'll give you a little clue, okay? If your legs get tired, go ahead and sit down. But I'm just one of those guys I've already chosen to stand up here the whole night. So I'm probably not going to tell you you may be seated. I apologize in advance. I probably should have started with that at the front. But since we're already there now, you're already halfway through. If you need to sit down, by all means, sit down, take a rest, and then pop back up like popcorn. But if, you, if you're going to hold out, I promise you, I'm going to stay standing up with you. So you don't even have to worry about it. Somebody shout faith over fear. Let's hit it.
let me tell you something right here. It doesn't matter what your situation looks like. I want you to know that you serve a God that is greater. There is nothing too hard for God. When the doctor steps in the diagnosis room and says you've got cancer, you can look that cancer back in the face and say my God is greater. There's nothing too hard. When the divorce lawyer tries to walk into your marriage, you can look back at that situation and say the devil is a liar. There is nothing too church tonight. I thought I was among a group of believers tonight. Somebody ought to shout as loud as you can right here. Hold on, hold on. I know y'all can jump to the beat. I know y'all can shout when the drummer's going and the music's going, but I wonder if there's anybody with a testimony that knows that God's good when the music's even quiet and you've got about 10 seconds to scream your head off, jump a little bit higher, dance a little bit. I'm going to give you a chance to do it. Three, two, one. something so powerful that's about to happen in this place when we release the revelation of the name of Jesus I want you to know that Jesus dispatches angels to wherever we are you're at home and you're struggling with your peace 
Release the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is as close as the mention of his name. I want you to know that there's an angelic host that's all around this place tonight. Angels are here tonight. You said, well, I can't see them. I want you to know they're here. The Bible, there, there's an old song that says, I feel the brush of angels' wings. As they walk past me, I can feel them. There's, there's people in here. I know you've already sensed the angelic host of the Lord in this room. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that the Bible says that they bring healing in their wings. So whatever you've been needing tonight, God has it for you here. I'm thankful for every person that's come up here to worship. But we're going to open up this altar for a specific move of God right now. I just wonder if you just take one or two steps back. I want every eye in that building closed and every head bowed for a moment. If the Lord came back tonight, if you heard in your bedchamber the trump of God sound would you be ready the Bible says that we know that his spirit has come to reside in our lives when we've had the miraculous experience of speaking in other tongues as the spirit of God give utterance it's more than a good feeling it's more than a confession of faith but Acts 2.38 tells us that when his spirit comes inside of us, we're going to speak in a heavenly language. If you came tonight and you've never spoken in a language that's not of this earth, but it's a heavenly language. It may sound like baby gibberish too, but you've never had that experience. And you'd like to have it tonight. You don't want to go into eternity not knowing what your future looks like. I wonder if you would raise your hand. If you've never had that experience... Just lift up your hand right now. There's hands going up. That's all right. Hands have been lifted. That's good. That's good. Hands have been lifted. Oh, the more hands, more hands. If you've never spoken in other tongues, that's all right. You can lift up your hands and just with every head bowed, every eye closed. That's good. That's good. That's all right, brother. That's good. More hands, more hands. Praise God. Oh, I see you. I see you. More hands. More hands. I see you. The Holy Ghost sees you. Jesus sees you. Praise God. You can put your hands down. If you came here tonight and you've never gone down in the waters of baptism where the name of Jesus was spoken over you, the Bible says that when we are baptized in Jesus' name, every sin that we have ever committed is completely washed away. Now that sounds real good, but I want to give you a revelation tonight. That means Jesus forgets about it. I know that you might remember it. I know that the enemy of your soul might try to remind you of everything that you've done wrong. But when you go down in the waters of baptism and the name of Jesus is spoken over you, the Bible says that they are completely washed away. And he completely forgets about it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you've never had that experience where your sins have been washed away in the waters of baptism and the name of Jesus was spoken over you and you want that experience tonight, why don't you just slip up your hand and say, Lord, I don't want to leave here with my sins. Oh, I see your hands raised. More hands. Oh, praise God. That's okay. That's okay. More hands. That's okay. Tell the Lord, I don't want to leave here with those sins on my record. I don't want to leave here with those conditions in my mind. I want them washed away. That's good, that's good. More hands, more hands. Beautiful, beautiful. Praise God, you can put your hands down. If you came tonight and you're living with pain in your body, you're living, you're living with a diagnosis that maybe a doctor can't fix, or maybe you're just unsure about it, you're scared about that diagnosis. Maybe you've been suffering through the spirit of suicide tonight and a spirit of anxiety. You can't sleep at night. You've tried sleeping pills, but anxiety and worry 
have gripped your life in your mind. If any of those circumstances are you tonight and you're sick and tired of living sick and tired and you're ready for a miracle tonight, I want you to lift up your hand. Hands are going up all over the house. More hands, more hands, more hands. That's all right. That's all right. I don't care what your, what your title is. I don't care what it says next to your name, how many degrees you have. I don't care how cool your friends think you are. If that's you, you're doing the right thing by lifting up your hand because Jesus is here. His love is here. And he came here to touch you and to rescue you. That's beautiful. More hands. Praise God. You can put your hands down. I want you to look at me. Over the course of those questions, at least 65 to 70% of the congregation lifted up their hands for either needing the Holy Ghost, for wanting to be baptized in Jesus' name and having their sins washed away, or suffering through some kind of issue in their life that they want God to do a miracle for. I want to commend you for being honest and authentic tonight. But I want you to know more than commending you, you don't have to just acknowledge that you need Jesus. He's here to give himself to you tonight. Praise God. Pastor, I wonder if you and some of the ministry of the church could just come up and line across the front here. If you raised your hand earlier and you said, you know what, I've never had the experience of speaking in other tongues. I've never spoken in another language where I knew that the Holy Ghost came and resided in me and I'd like to have that experience tonight. We saw a number of hands go up there. I wonder if you just come to this side of the altar right here. Just come right here. That's good, that's good, that's good. Praise God, there were more hands that raised their hands for that. That's okay, that's good. Oh, praise God, praise God, that's all right. Good, that's good, that's good my friend, that's good. That's good, that's good. There were a couple more hands that were raised during that section. That's all right, come on down. Jesus sees you. How many believe this is a house of love right now? Woo! The loving power of the Holy Ghost is here. In Jesus' name, praise God. God bless each and every one of you. If you said, I don't want to go another day with the sins on my, on my record, where the devil can make me feel bad for things that I've done. I want God to forget about those sins. If you, have, if you have, didn't raise your hand for that, but you raised your hand to have those sins washed away, I want you to come right here. I want you to come down from right here. That's good, that's good. We've got folks that are gonna step you through that process. If that's you, I want you to come here. There were more hands. That's all right, brother. My friend. My friend, what's your name? Boaz. All right, brother. All right, you got yourself a Boaz, sis. Amen. Hey, Boaz, you're going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. You look at me, Boaz. The devil's tried to destroy your life. The devil's tried to take you out. But you're here tonight for a reason. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. Now, Boaz... Boaz, I'm sure she's a sweet girl, but you don't need to hold her hand while you're reaching for God. God wants to hold your hand. So in a moment, the Holy Ghost is going to touch you, and you're going to be speaking in another language. I feel the Holy Ghost in the room. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost here. If you've been struggling with the spirit of suicide, I want you to know it's going to be broken tonight. If you've been struggling with the spirit of of depression and anxiety it's going to be broken tonight I want you to know if you've been living through pain in your life it's going to be healed tonight if you raise your hand for those things and if you have faith I want you to come down here to this area right here that's all right brother my friend what's your name your name Tim when you raised your hand when I asked that question I knew in the Holy Ghost that God was going to touch you tonight. There are other young men that you're connected to that are struggling with the same thing. 
God's going to deliver them tonight or you're going to have to cut them off. But I want you to know you can walk out of here delivered. You don't have to go back to the same place. But you listen to me, Tim. And I want some other young soul out there that hasn't stepped up here, that needs to step up here for this prayer. When God delivers you tonight, you need to make the decision to cut some of those spirits off. They may have names of your friends on them. But for you to stay safe, for you to stay secure, you've got to cut that stuff off. You've got to say, hey, I love you, but my soul is too important. You hear me? God's going to do it tonight. God's going to do it tonight. If you came for that pain or an issue or anxiety or depression, lift up your hand right here tonight. If you're down here for that, I want to see who those people are. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's all right. Good, good, good. Praise the Lord. God's going to do it tonight. First thing that we're going to do, we're going to begin to repent. And I want, as we're repenting, that means to turn away. I want you to ask the Lord to forgive you of all the things that you've done. I want you to ask the Lord to, uh, to tell, I want you to ask the Lord to help you turn away from the things that you've done in the past, the things that you know are wrong, maybe some things that you don't know are wrong that you've been doing. Ask the Lord to identify what those things are and make a change tonight. Can somebody say amen? And then I want you to just begin to worship the Lord. Lift up your hands and begin to say something beautiful to God, okay? While you're doing that, we're going to begin to sing a song called Anything Can Happen. And you're going to feel the Holy Ghost move over you. At some point in that song or at the end of the song, we're going to give a word of faith. And the Holy Ghost is going to fall and miracles are going to happen. Some of you, it's going to happen during the song. And some of you, it's going to happen after the song when we speak that word of faith. But I want you to begin to pray. And ministers, I want you to feel free to begin to minister and pray with each of these individuals. Now, are there any folks with faith in the house that believe that God's about to do something powerful? If you want to worship in your pew, that's fine. If you want to come up and join with these people behind them and just point your hand their direction, that's fine as well. But I want to turn this entire church, this entire house, into an altar. Is that all right? From the front to the back, everybody shout amen. From the front to the back, everybody shout amen. From the front to the back, everybody shout amen. Let's lift up our hands. God, in the name of Jesus, I repent right now. I turn away from my sin. I release those people from those actions against me. I'm not going to hold it to their charge. That's right. As you feel led, ministers, begin to lay hands on people and begin to pray with them. That's it. That's it. of your power we want more than stories we're declaring and believing for it now prepare the atmosphere so you can be welcome here
Now hold on just one moment. Hold on just one moment. All over the house, just hold on just one moment. Look at me real quick. I want you to know, Boaz, 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 pastor told me that you spoke in a language that you've never spoken in before. And guess what? Not only Boaz spoke in it, but his girlfriend spoke in it. And my other brother here spoke in it for the first time. Three people just got the Holy Ghost for the first time. Fourth person just got the Holy Ghost for the first time. Did we have some folks go back for baptism a few minutes ago? Did we have some folks that came up asking for the Lord to wash? Okay, he's going to get the, he's going to get baptized. Praise God. Boaz is going to get baptized. How many are thankful for that? Is there anybody that came up here with pain in your body earlier 
but that pain is gone right now. That pain is gone right now. My friend right here, is there anybody else? My brother right here, my sister right there. God bless you, sis. <laughs> she was like, right here, right here. Yes, sis, you go ahead and shout over it. Yes. Okay, now hold on. This is gonna take some really brave people right here. How many came up here and you still have pain in your body? Yes, thank you. Thank you for being an honest Christian tonight. You sis, you still have pain in your body. Is there anybody else that still has pain in your body? You still have pain in your body. Okay. You said, good. Thank you for being honest. How many of you, if you had 10, I'm not saying you do. If you had 10 rats in your house and you got eight of them out, you're going to say, oh, we'll just let the two make, take up residence. Is there anybody that's going to do that? Or are you going to continue to sweep the place until the last two are gone? I'll tell you one thing. I wish, I wish, I was speaking to an atheist the other day. I wish I could understand the mysteries of God. I wish I could understand them. There are a couple of things that I know. When you get the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues. When you're baptized in Jesus' name, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but in Jesus' name, every sin is gone. But, 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 I cannot explain why there are times where I pray for people and things are completely removed instantly and there are other times where it's a process of healing. But I do know one thing that the Bible says that when I speak to the mountain, it shall be removed to yonder place. I know that the Bible says, like David, that even though I'm going through the shadow of death, it's a shadow. It's not death. It's a shadow of death. I don't have to fear any evil because he's with me. He's given me his rod and he's given me his staff and they're going to comfort me. That means I'm going to make it to the other side. I don't have to be content in this turmoil. I will will make it to the other side. So I know you still have pain in your body, but when we speak to it here in a moment, God's going to heal it and it's going to be gone. I don't know why you still have pain in your body, but I want you to know we're going to speak to it and in a moment it's going to be gone. I don't know what situation you're facing in your life. I don't know why you have to go through this hardship and why you've been dealing with anxiety. But when Jesus steps in the room, anything can and will happen. So I want to open up this last prayer one time. I'm going to speak a word of faith right now. If something is inside of you urging you to come to this altar, I don't care what the reason is. I don't care what the situation looks like. I don't care what your prayer for that situation looks like. But if that's you, you feel an urge in your stomach. You feel an urge in your spirit to make your way to this altar. Along with these people that just raised their hands, I want you to come up and I want you to get your feet right up against this altar. I want you to let your desire out right now. I don't care what that reason is, but something is urging you to this altar for this prayer I want you to come up and I want you to get your feet right to this altar now I said something in repentance earlier that I didn't call out specifically some of you up here are dealing with certain things in your life because of things that people have done to you and bitterness has caused rot in your body has caused rot in your mind. When we pray this next time, before I release a word of faith, you need to release that person. You cannot have healing with the poison of bitterness stuck in your spirit. You have to release them. I know they deserve to be judged, but you're going to have to let it go to get what you need. I know they did you wrong. Some of you are dealing with sexual abuse tonight. I know that's a tough thing. It's been buried in your mind. But I promise you, you're never going to get rid of that thought until you release them from it. Until you get decide you're not going to judge them for it. Until you leave judgment up to God. But the Bible says that revenge is the Lord's. But I got to a place in my life where there are some times where people do something so horrible to me. That I say, God, I don't want you to even judge them. I just want it completely gone. 
I want it wiped. I want to be like you, God. I want it thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. Some of you need to say that prayer. You're not just going to forgive them. You're going to release them. And you're going to ask God to release them. And after you pray that prayer, we're going to pray a prayer of faith. And in that moment, you're going to get exactly what you need. If, that, if you believe that, don't be quiet when you do that. Shout it at the top of your lungs. I want you to shout yes. Three, two, one. Yes. That wasn't good enough. I'm going to give you another chance. At the top of your lungs. Don't be quiet about it. Three, two, one. Yes. Hallelujah. That's faith, folks. Lift up your hands. God, right now, I release them from that charge. They sexually abused me, God. They verbally abused me. They abused my children. They tore my family apart, God, but I will not hold on to this anymore. I refuse to hold on to this. I want you to release them. I refuse to hold it at their charge. I want you to wipe it from their record, God. I want you to wipe it from their record. They tried to hurt me. They tried to send me back to my country. They tried to say things about me to people that they didn't even care about just to hurt me. But I want you to release them, Lord. I refuse to hold it to their charge right now. My health is too valuable. My soul is too valuable. Heaven is too valuable. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. Things are breaking right now. Things are breaking. Even while you're beginning to release them, some of you are getting your healing right now. Some of you are getting your healing right now. Just by you releasing them, that poison is leaving your body and you're getting your healing right now. Now lift up your head and lift up your hands. We're going to speak a word of faith. And when I shout hallelujah, I want you to shout hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is going to fall. You ready? By the authority of the word of God and by the power that is in the name of Jesus, I release the Holy Ghost to fill every one of these people and to release healing in this house. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, that's it.
anything can happen anything can happen the moment that you walk in anything can happen anything can happen anything can happen Somebody just lift up your hands and thank the Lord. We're going to sing one more song, and I just want to release a blessing over you. If you want to go home with a touch from the Lord, just lift up your hands over your family, over your mind, over your spirit, all over the house. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Somebody say that. Lord, bless you. Lord, bless you. shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and be peace. We believe and we agree. Amen. this house, God. We believe and we declare this faith right here and right now over our minds and spirits. May his faith be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children
just lift up our voices right now and thank the Lord for what he's done here tonight. Let's give him praise right now. God has filled many with the Holy Ghost. God has healed many here tonight. We've got a couple of young people that are going to be baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't we thank Brother Mark Crowder for that tremendous ministry here tonight. for the crowd. Glory to God. If God has touched you tonight and done a miracle in your life, would you just raise your hand? Let's see them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We are so excited about what God has done. We are just rejoicing of the incredible power of God. Sister Ruthie just received the Holy Ghost after many years. I think she's been trying for about 10 years. Brother Crowder, tonight she finally got it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The good news is we've got Brother Crowder for another couple of days. There's no service tomorrow night, but there is for those, the musicians and singers, a workshop tomorrow morning starting at 10 a.m. But Brother Crowder is going to be ministering in our Sunday services at 10 a.m., 9.15 and 11.15 on Sunday. So you don't want to miss that. Hallelujah. But when we close in prayer, we're going to witness these two precious souls that are going to step in the waters of salvation and are going to be baptized. Three souls. Hallelujah. Why don't we pray? And all of our guests, we want to thank you for being a part of this service. Great to see some of those from other churches from all around Sydney and Australia. We're glad that you're here. Please don't go without making our acquaintance and saying good day. Let's lift up our voices and thank the Lord for what he's done. Father, we thank you tonight for this wonderful outpouring, for this revival. We thank you for the man of God and the anointed ministry of leading us into your presence, of ministering the word of God to us tonight and directing us by virtue of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Tonight, Lord, we go and we walk in the victory, Lord, of the blessing, Lord God, that has been poured out upon our lives. We walk in that victory tonight and we give you thanks and praise for the miracles that you have worked in us tonight. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let's rejoice one more time. According to your obedience to the word of God, we now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins.
Pastor, according to your obedience to the Word of God, we now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. According to your obedience to the Word of God, we now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Amen. 